Law Warrior Online Vehicles. Mobile Headquarters. Overview. Mobile Headquarters are the nerve centre of big-scale battleneck operations. They gather information from the various participants in a battle, and then use sophisticated computers to present the data to the commander for analysis. The idea of Mobile Headquarters has existed since the days when a commander roamed over the battlefield, giving orders to officers and dispatching horse-mounted messengers. As technology grew, so did the design of mobile HQs evolve from horsed messengers to pulled vans with radio sets. Late 20th century computer technology added predictive ability to a commander's skills. Large computer-generated projections, accurate down to the individual tree, replaced bulky and inaccurate paper maps. These show terrain and could be marked with symbols to represent the units of both friend and foe. Since that time, the mobile headquarters have changed little except to grow more efficient with the advent of fusion power and subspace communications. Capabilities A mobile headquarters is placed at the disposal of the regimental commander, and holds his staff of six officers and three communication technicians, as well as the driver, engineer and gunner. Weighing 25 tonnes, the mobile headquarters in the illustration was the standard design used by Star League throughout its 200 year history. The rare fusion engine is placed just below the crew cab, Having the engine housed within the truck's body allows the engineer to get at its major components without too much trouble. Except for its glass window, the cab protects the driver, engineer and gunner with armoured doors and walls. Just behind the cab is the headquarters proper, which is divided into a larger map communications room and the commander's private quarters. The map communications room is dominated by a large table, where the command staff gathers. The HQ's computer gathers information from satellites, mech communications, and the tracking devices each mech and soldier carries. Then it projects this as a map on the table's surface. Using a tri hollow device, the terrain and the individual troop members appear as solid symbols and surfaces. If known, the enemy's positions are also projected. Then, if the commander so orders, the large and very rare computer system will project its opinion of the battle's future and its suggestions as how to proceed. The three communications officers, seated at consoles near the forward end of the HQ, constantly supply the commander with communiques from troops. They also dispatch the commander's orders, using either voice or fast bundled code that can usually pierce even the most sophisticated electronic jamming. The communications system is capable of exchanging information with satellites, aerospace fighters, dropships, and even distant jump ships. The large dish antennae seen in the illustration is collapsible and can be affixed to the roof of the HQ within one minute. The second antenna is a directional one that allows communication with individual mechs or soldiers. It also doubles as an antenna for the side look radar. The interior is kept stable by a sophisticated suspension system that allows normal activity within the command centre when the truck is moving at high speeds. Battle history. The mobile headquarters is slowly vanishing from general use because the advanced computer and communication system is beyond the know-how of most repair techs. Indeed, Quite a few mobile HQs in current use are only partially operable, having lost some abilities due to parts failure or battle damage. Many have completely lost the use of the HQ's computer, requiring that the regimental commander and his staff revert back to maps or some jury-rigged device to view the battlefield. Sometimes, the few working components of a mobile HQ are crammed with the smaller command van. Its rarity makes a mobile HQ a much sought-after prize on the battlefield, both for its cargo of valuable officers and for the vehicle itself. Mercenary units in particular will seldom pass up the chance to at least try to capture a HQ intact. The attempted capture of a mobile HQ usually involves approaching it from the rear, or blocking all possible escape routes. Even then, the attackers are loath to shoot at the HQ itself. Instead, they will try to disable the truck with shots at the engine or wheels. Capturing a mobile HQ intact is a tricky business, made even more difficult when the HQ's gunner is shooting back and a rescue force is no doubt on the way. Both the Lyran Commonwealth and Draconis Combine routinely post two mech guards on their mobile HQs. These are usually light, mobile mechs who can keep up with the truck should it have to move at speed. Responsible for the safety of the mobile HQ and the regimental commander inside, these mechs and their pilots are expected to lay down their lives if duty requires it. The other successor house commanders seem content to post one mech or a unit of soldiers and tanks to protect the mobile HQ. Variants the mobile HQ pictured is the standard design seen throughout the Inner Sphere. The only variations exist is the choice of main weaponry for the truck's turret. The Draconis Combine and the Capellan Confederation have armed their mobile HQs with a large laser or an LRM-10, 
which requires redesigning and substantially altering the truck's crew cab. The other houses prefer to keep the medium laser, the vehicle's original armament. As mercenary units seldom possess these HQs, they must rely on command vans and good communications. When a merc unit manages to get its hands on a mobile HQ, it's a major point in its favour when being considered for employment by a successor house. Jamie Wolfe's Dragoons have five mobile HQs, all seemingly brand new. Hanson's Rough Riders is another merc unit with a mobile HQ, though theirs is second hand from the Lyran Commonwealth. Notable mobile HQs. The mobile HQ for the mercenary Narhal's Raiders is famous for driving right up and into the midst of battle as though daring an opponent to capture or destroy it. Should the enemy take the challenge, the surrounding raiders seem to go berserk and begin to fight five times harder. It is though the site of the HQ receiving fire where the drug needed to get the most out of the raiders. Lord Curita's regimental commanders have a far sneakier use for the site of a mobile HQ. On several occasions, an apparently vulnerable Curita HQ was spotted by forces from the Federated Sons. Thinking they would have an easy time of it, the Davians approached, only to be surprised by the walls of the HQ falling down to reveal an assortment of heavy weaponry. As Duke Davian's mech sought to retreat, they then found their path blocked by Curita units coming to close and setting up a trap behind the bogus mobile HQ.